This live martial arts class, we're gonna be talking about the Japanese Tessin, Ninjutsu Tessin, the Ninja Tessin, or the Chinese Kung Fu fighting fan. They're similar, they're a little bit different weapons, material is often a little bit different. This is a Kung Fu fighting fan, but the concept is exactly the same. We're gonna talk about it. Moves, techniques might be a little different too, but we're talking about the Kung Fu fighting fan or the Ninjutsu Tessin, laughable or lethal? Is it a laughable weapon? And a lot of people do laugh at it, so we're gonna get that out of the way. Yes, a lot of people laugh at it because they don't really know that it's basically a stick, a fighting, it's a, uh, what I call a fighting stick or an, a version of a stick, something that you can turn into a stick. Obviously, it's several sticks put together. There's usually some kind of pin right there and it fans out, hence the name, right? This one has the, uh, the dragon and the, uh, what is that? A phoenix. I love the phoenix. What a great martial arts symbol, the phoenix, always rising again. But this one is something that you will be able to practice with. Of course, you can fan yourself with it. You can see I'm hot and sweaty. I've been working out really hard this morning. But I wanted to talk about fighting with sticks. Fighting with sticks is one of my passions, one of my favorite things, because you can pick up sticks almost anywhere. And if you have nothing else, especially if you have somebody, an attacker, who has a knife, the knife, this knife is very sharp, it's very uh, strong, and it doesn't bleed, this doesn't bleed. This will cut it, but it's not gonna bleed. It's not gonna cut through it either. It might take off a couple pieces, but if you have nothing else, this is if nothing else, you have, if you have the option, someone pulls out a knife, run, if you can run. If you can get out of there, if you have another uh, weapon for self-defense, defend yourself, but try not to be there. Don't be in a situation, but if you have no other choice, a knife comes out and you have a Kung Fu fighting fan or Japanese Tessin, can you defend yourself? Can you defend yourself against a larger opponent? Can you defend yourself against multiple attackers? Is it a practical self-defense stick or is it just a fancy movie weapon or a cartoon? You see them a lot in different manga. In this case, it's a, a basic practice weapon that I use. I teach people this all the time. This wood is really grass. It's made out of rattan, the same thing that a collie stick is made out of. And I wanna start with that first. This is a rattan collie stick or a screaming stick or an ace stick. These are very popular. These are very functional. They're very effective and they hit very hard. You can slice, do slicing strikes. You can do jabbing strikes with the length, the long end. You can do jabbing strikes with the back end. You see a lot of spinning and twirling. That's not necessarily the move itself, but it can add speed into the strikes and it is very effective for self-defense. So if you had a collie stick and they had a knife, let me grab the knife again, the same principle is true. So as we talk about the Kung Fu fighting fan or the Japanese Tessin, we're fighting with sticks. Is it a laughable weapon or is it a lethal weapon? We'll talk about laughable or lethal, lethal in just a minute, but as we make a comparison, I wanna compare it here first to this collie stick. Now, the collie stick doesn't bleed. The collie stick has a length advantage over that knife or that very sharp knife that if they close that distance you're done you're in big trouble with this knife you have the same length advantage you don't but you have some length advantage it's almost twice as long do you have the same advantage that this doesn't bleed absolutely i'd rather have them nick this up and cut this than cut my fingers my tendons cut an artery cut something that's not going to be able to be healed and then you're expired, you're done. So it's better than nothing in that case. Comparing it to the stick, when you close it here, and I'm gonna talk about how you open it, how to do all that stuff. When you close it here, and you slash, and you slice, and you jab, and you strike, you have all of the same benefits that you would with the collie stick. You don't have the reach. So in the reach, is it as long as the collie stick? No. But is this a fighting stick? Is it effective? Can you use it for self-defense? And let's talk about that now. I'm gonna have a harder strike with this longer stick than I am with this. However, this across the face, into the vital spots, slashing this motion, even striking a joint like the wrist or smashing the hand, that knife is coming in, it's smashing. 
This, when you squeeze it tight, is going to be a very hard strike. As hard as a stick? No. But does it work? Is it effective? Can you use it for self-defense? The answer is absolutely yes. Now, with the collie stick, again, longer, you have this jabbing with the long side. You also have the striking with the jabbing with the short side. And you can do jabs at angles. You can come across the body. You can go straight into the face, straight into the nose, straight into the throat, straight into the solar plexus. Go one, add that slice. Can you do that with this? Watch. Jabbing, very effective as long as you have a good grip. Into the eyes, right? Coming back into the throat. Can you come into the solar plexus and come back out with a strike? Yes. Do you have the same reach? No. Is it going to be just as hard with this as with this? I think so because look at that. That's about the same length that I would hold whether I hold it here or not. Now, some of the other things that you see when you see the fan that are confusing and might make you think that it's just a laughable fancy weapon is that we do this all the time. This is cool, so that's why we do it. And you see that in a movie, but you can also say, well, it's a distraction. And you can turn that around in the other side of your hand and do the same thing right into the face. And in theory, is that the guy's coming at you real fast to his face, is that effective? Yeah, that might startle, might move him back a little bit. So yes, you could do that, and then you can strike. From here, close it, strike, strike, slash. You can do all the same things you would with this. You have the extra bonus of being able to pop it open. And when you pop it, if you want to practice on your own, you hold your thumb here, your first finger here. That goes in the palm of your hand, and you just practice opening and let it drop. Turn your hand back. Now, I have a bunch of these for sale. If you want to look in the link below, if you want to get one, and discover for yourself, is it just is it a lethal weapon, kung fu fighting fan, or the Japanese Tessin? Is it legit? Is it lethal or is it laughable? Is it just a joke? It's a lot of fun to train with either way. I think once you start to use it, you'll see that if you squeeze it hard and you practice striking, strike all the same hand techniques that you might use with a fighting stick, like a collie stick or an escrima stick or an arnie stick, and as long as you have a good grip, you're gonna find that yes, it is very effective. Have a little bit coming out the end, jabbing right into, that's a force multiplier right there. All the force of your strike gets concentrated into a hard stack of wood, or in this case, it's really grass, because we're tan as a grass. But it, it concentrates it, it focuses it, it makes it very effective. You also have these slashing motions, and you have these striking motions. Now, if you want something else to practice, we'll go back to the first one. Your thumb goes here, your finger on the inside, and I wanna show you, open your hand, turn your hand back. Put it in the other hand, and see where my thumb is holding? I'm going to do the other side because it opens one way and not the other way. It's gonna open from the thumb side in your right hand, and it's gonna open from the first finger side, but you're gonna hold it the same way in your left hand. Yeah, if you think about targeting for self-defense, what are the targets you can remove or destroy? Their ability to see, breathe, temporarily, permanently, the uh, ability to stand up upright or breathe right into the groin, right beneath the belly button or right in the belly button. You go straight in, very fast, striking motion, hard to see. And then you do the fancy thing at the end so you look cool, but the rest of it is the practical stuff. It's just a stick. It's an improvised stick. That was the word I was looking for at the beginning. I couldn't think of it. My, one of my favorite things to do is to look around and find, roll up a magazine very tightly, and it's about the same length as this, you now have an improvised stick. Is it your best fighting option? It is if you have nothing else. That's the whole point. Someone will say, well, that's not practical. It's a laughable weapon. It's a joke. When you're fighting with sticks, the Kung Fu fighting fan or the Japanese Tessin, is it legit or is it just a fantasy weapon? Is it lethal or is it laughable or is it laughable or lethal? You can make your own decision. And who cares what anybody else thinks? And if you love the weapon, train with it. On the other hand, just practice open, Turn your hand back, open, turn your hand back. Open and squeeze, turn your hand back. Open and squeeze, and then when you're ready, pop it and squeeze. Now there are other ways to block using the spines to protect your arm. Block down, block the middle. Would I use those in self-defense? I really don't 
prefer to block. I like to have a good guard. After I have a good guard, I'm in a protected position. I'm going to strike. I'm going to strike hard and fast. I'm going to try to go through the target. I'm going to try to remove those targets. Eyes, nose, ears, mouth, solar plexus, joints, whatever I can for self-defense. Higher, lower, doesn't matter. But the question is, when you're fighting with sticks, the Kung Fu fan or the Japanese, the Ninjutsu Tessin or the Ninja Tessin, you see it in all kinds of different movies and in different cartoons or different uh, theories. Is it legit? Yeah, I think you can make anything lethal, right? People choke, there was a uh, famous bodybuilder a couple years ago, choked on his chicken. He was eating his chicken too fast, choked to death before anybody could get there and help him. It's so chicken, it's a chicken nugget lethal? It can be, so yes. The answer is, depends on how you use it. One more thing I want you to practice is in your hand, just make these palm motions, palm rolls, palm rolls, because when you get it in the back of your hand, you're gonna pinch the opposite side, and that's where you do that snapping motion, pop. And then you close it, and you have your striking, slashing, jabbing weapon again. But from here, you're holding the bottom, pop it out, and then you roll it back around. This is something you can practice Hold your thumb on the back in your right hand. Your thumb is on the first spine. The finger is on the other side. The other hand, fingers get out of the way. Close it, roll it, come down to the bottom. Put your first finger here and your thumb on the inside. If you can see that. And then without letting it go. And the last thing you can do, which is fancy, has very little use, except in theory and in the movies, Let's pretend that all these have a little blade on the end because you'll see that in the movie and you pop it open, slice the guy, and then you throw it. And you can practice throwing it all day long. Again, if you want to see what those cost, there's a link below. I just got a bunch in and I can now ship them in, uh, if you want one. If, not, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But if it's for somebody else, don't make fun of it until you really understand. All it is is an improvised sticks. And if you have a stick, you can defend yourself. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit.